So I'm just gonna let Mark take it away and we are going to see how Kimbo's are brought to life today. Good morning everyone. Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. I'm joined today with my friend Mark King, founder and owner of both Trayvax and Kimbo. Good to see you, man. Nice to see you too. So today we are standing in the Kimbo facility, actually right next to Trayvax, so we'll get into some of that stuff later. And we're just gonna jump right into this one. You guys seem to have a lot of questions about the Kimbo from the previous video. If you haven't seen that yet, check it out. There's a link right up there in the corner. So I'm just gonna let Mark take it away and we are going to see how Kimbo's are brought to life today. Hey everybody, welcome to Kimbo and I'm happy that you're here. Today I'm gonna show you the process of Kimbo and kind of what's behind it in the same way that we've shown you what's behind Trayvax. I think that that's the most important part of, you know, buying something or, you know, owning something. And so it all starts with uh, kind of the end of the line. This actually took us two years to develop the way that this is palletized. And it doesn't look like much when you look at it at first. We took two years to design Kimbo so that it all nests into itself. That makes it so that we can grow this business without having a bunch of parts everywhere. So this entire pile is the shell of a Kimbo, just not assembled. Yep. Some assembly required. And over here we've got jack brackets and a bunch of windows. Something that was important to me is using really high quality parts. It took a long time to gather all of the components together that make up a Kimbo because we had to kind of prototype what worked well and what wasn't worth putting inside of the camper. Over here we've got some jacks and up on these shelves we have, uh, we have windows and refrigerators, solar panels, the Dickinson fireplaces and fans and so this area is kind of some of the larger items that make up a Kimbo. And then over here we've got uh, jack brackets. So you guys make these or have them made specific for the Kimbo. This is a yes. Kimbo product. Yeah. So these go onto the side and they are really, really sturdy. Then after that, what we do is we take all of these parts that are nested together and we start to make them into a camper. Just take take them off one piece at a time and start to assemble them into a camper that looks just like this. This is like the birth of a Kimbo right here. So we, we assemble them together and then we start to caulk the interior. We put on things like these tie down brackets and there are thousands and thousands of rivets that make up a Kimbo camper. Something that I had done research on is actually like the, the spacing, the amount of spacing between rivets and some camper manufacturers have increased their rivet spacing to beyond 1.5 inches, in some cases like three inches. And I wanted to make sure that ours was spaced to 1.5 so that this thing was as strong as it possibly could be. This is a camper after it has been, all of the parts have been assembled together. There are a lot of pieces and parts. Uh, we've got door seals. If you look inside here, after it's built and caulked, we put in some of the beginnings of electrical, and we put in wooden partitions, and we put in the propane bays, these metal partitions as well. Here's a chimney component. So 100 watt solar panel charges the whole camper. And we've got this really sturdy white coating on the top so that the ceiling doesn't absorb as much heat during the summer. It also just looks good. It does look good. <laughs> Can't argue with that. So the camper looks like this at stage two. It's starting to come together. It doesn't have windows yet, but there are some little decisions that we've made along the way to to retain the structural integrity of the whole camper, like these brackets that go underneath the bed. And the reason why I put these on is because I was in the middle of Utah and driving, I got some crosswind and the bottom of my bed started resonating. And I could uh -huh. hear it. 
So I ended up putting these under and the problem's gone now. Awesome. But it was like figuring out how to make the product, how to make the camper through testing. Prototype, trial and error, I dig it. This is the third stage of building a Kimbo. And this is where we put on the jack brackets and the ladder, and then we put the interior in. So we put all the foam panels in, line the uh, propane bay. We start putting in furniture, all of the trim pieces, the batteries, the wiring, baskets, lighting, the uh, storage cubbies. And so this is where it starts to become a Kimbo and really starts to feel cozy. And you can see here's the kitchen space. There's a lot that goes into this. And there's a lot of, there are a lot of little things like making sure that we caulk this area successfully so that if water is in here, then it never say leaks into the main. Area. Those kinds of little details are really important. So at this stage, then we're going to pressure test the camper. And by pressure testing, you mean check the seals, make sure it doesn't leak yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, this is this is the third stage of Akimbo and where all the finishing details happen. Here's some of the inventory. So it took, I guess, two and a half years to start Kimbo. There are thousands of little details that go into building something like this. It is an insane amount of work, but and once everything gets together, it's it's pretty neat to see. So here, this was this was one challenge is figuring out how to control our inventory correctly. And we're still figuring this out every day. There are hundreds and hundreds of components and thousands of little processes. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I mean you don't even really think about, just like a tiny fridge fan and latches and hinges and power cables. There's quite a lot that goes into these. Mm -hmm. So this is a finished camper. It's about ready to head out the door. And everything is put in place. It's been tested and kind of gone over with a fine tooth comb. I, I really want to put quality out into the world, honestly. As it's at this stage, we've got kind of one last round to go through, making sure that it's ready for a customer, but this is the inside. So we've got a teak floor right there. So this is kind of cool. It's like, it's a storage area where you can put, you know, any, any camping gear or anything that you want to take with you. But then it folds, this folds down. And Very that's, cool. That's your seating area. So this one isn't quite as specked out as the one that we showed in the previous video. Cause I noticed that this one doesn't have the shower type of module. It doesn't have a drain for that. Yeah. And then there are just other things that you can add like the storage that you're yeah. leaning up against. Does, like it, does this, this one, one have a desk? This one does not have an AC. Okay, no AC. But it does have a desk. It does have a desk. There are some other things that change too, like the kitchen is a little bit different from your model, but this is what customers are now receiving out yep. in the world. Yeah. And I'm assuming most customers come here to pick up Kimbo's. Yes. You don't ship them anywhere or have you? We just started shipping. Okay. Yeah. That's sure. been kind of tricky to figure out. Yeah, I was because gonna say. you can't put this onto a flatbed trailer very easily. Yeah, because you would need to have the supports down yeah, yeah. unless you would like, like Tetris them in somehow and yeah. <laughs> get yeah. them all rigged up. So we finally figured that part out. So now we're starting to ship them to different areas of the country. And we are back ordered until June. Yeah, June of 2021, Dang. which is awesome. Well, that's good for you guys, yeah. You have uh, quite the facility here to put these things together. We're getting there one step at a time. It is a heck of a lot of work. Building a camper like this is relatively easy compared to building the factory that builds the camper and all of the logistics that go behind it. And it's, I've definitely learned a lot through this process, yeah, but I'm really, you know, it's, it's awesome to be able to come in here at night and just see everything being made, you know, kind of one stage after the next. And we're only at the, you're only at the very beginning of this company. It's in its infancy stages. 
And so I'm really looking forward to Kimbo expanding into pull behinds, larger truck bed campers, modules. Um, there's a lot that we can start innovating and getting into. So there you guys have an inside look at how these Kimbos come to life. And now I'm just gonna do this sort of impromptu. I'm gonna pull some of the questions and comments that you guys left on the previous video. And we're just gonna ask Mark directly so you can have a true authentic response. So the first one that I saw and a lot of people have commented this, maybe you can comment back on it. A lot of people say, he should make a Kimbo specifically for the Tesla truck. And on the Kimbo Living Instagram, I think you guys actually mocked one up in the yeah. back of a truck, which was really cool. The whole geometric design and yeah. everything, it fits with the truck really well. Yeah. I don't know enough about the truck to know if something like this would fit. Like, is it a six foot bed? Yeah. Um, but is that something that you guys could accommodate in the future? Yeah. That's a niche market yeah. and you're making it even more narrow, so. It's funny, so we so we actually developed the Kembo before the Tesla truck uh, was shown. And and so when the Tesla truck came out, I mean, that was pretty cool because it, it almost looks just like a Tesla truck. Yeah. And so it would take some modification because if you look at the sides of, of the Tesla truck, they, they curve downwards and yeah. so the camper probably wouldn't as it's as it, as it is now it wouldn't fit but we would have to do some modifications to make it fit and the other thing i've been thinking about is with the tesla truck how long would your range be with something like a, a, a camper in the back and i don't yeah. really know but the good news is that i put my what it was like a hundred dollars you put an order in yeah I put, awesome <laughs> i didn't make a video about it i put an order in for one of the tesla trucks and um yeah i i'm mostly sure that I'm gonna get one of the things. And then I think it'd be pretty cool to to design a Kimbo to Dude, fit into it. You gotta make that happen. Just for would, like the photos alone, it would be so cool. <laughs> it would definitely look like a lunar lunar lander with that thing in the back. 100%, that's cool, man, that's exciting. Cause I would have put like the $100 deposit down on the truck, but at the time when they released it, I don't own a house. I still don't own a house. I wouldn't have a place to charge it. And then the range comes into play. And I was just like, not not right now, yeah. but man, that's awesome. <laughs> the next two questions I'm gonna lump together and we've already talked about this um, in the previous video and again today, but people are asking, is this homie gonna make a travel trailer style and is an eight foot model going to happen? I can't find anything on it. So people want to know if you're going to make them bigger for bigger trucks yeah. and of course turn it into a tow, tow behind camper. We are going to make an eight foot version of the Kimbo and we are going to make a pull behind. The timeline of it is it keeps getting pushed to be honest with you because it has been really complicated and expensive to build this factory for just one camper. Yeah. And so I don't want to get into a wider product line without without becoming masters of making this making this well enough that people trust it. Honestly, yeah. it's like I think that that's been a philosophy in Travax too. Is like our product line is not so intensive, but every product that we make is really high quality and i want kimbo to be the same so it might take a few years to get to the place of making say a pull behind mm -hmm. um it might take a couple years to get to the place of making an eight foot but when we do make an eight foot it's going to be awesome yeah i mean this thing is already pretty spacious like do you feel like we're sitting in the bed of a uh, six foot truck right now no no definitely not <laughs> But it's, it's really cozy, so it'll be cool to have that extra like two feet of space in here. Yeah. You could like exercise right here and do all sorts of stuff. You're already working on getting this like completely polished and perfected while keeping up with demand, which you said you're back ordered into like the summer. And you're also working on building out the processes that need to be in place to make everything run smoothly. So there's a lot of gears that are turning all together and I think once it seems like once you get all that stuff well oiled and it's a running machine yeah. then you'll be able to expand the product line a little yeah, bit definitely and then I guess the final question this is something that I 
personally like that you mentioned in the previous video and I think once you said it, it resonated with a lot of people. You mentioned how Kimbo's are built with quality with the opportunity for repair. Someone said that's a wonderful concept and many other companies should take note of that. So could you like elaborate on that a little bit and yeah. why that makes sense? <laughs> it's easy to make something complex. It's difficult to make something simple. And when you look at the inside of a Kimbo, it's really not that complicated. You know, we've got a water tank and, you know, a hand pump that makes up the sink and we've got these this kind of modular uh, these modular storage options in the walls they can be removed and there's nothing really that complicated or fancy or high-tech about this camper and that's exactly the way that it should be because I want you to be able to own this for a long period of time and to feel confident enough to be sent parts or components and to be able to install them on your own I think that that does a couple things first it makes it so that you have the opportunity to have a deep ownership in this product so that you can hand it down to your kids or you know um, or own it for years and be proud of it um, if the systems in this are so complicated that you've got to take it to some high-tech dealership in order to get it repaired like most campers then it just becomes a nuisance because you're having to pay thousands of dollars to to get the thing fixed and, and you don't know how how it works um, I take a lot of pride in being able to fix my own house mm -hmm. and I take a lot of pride in being able to fix this and I want that I want you to have that experience too I think that's definitely something that resonates with me because traveling around in the van that I have there are some fairly complex systems in it but my van is an older model like a first generation so things were still fairly simplistic when they were designed now every year they're putting in new systems and different water pumps and different electrical components here and there. And like you said, it becomes much more difficult to just have the confidence to fix on your own. I have been sort of like deconstructing and reconstructing my van since I've owned it. So I know the ins and outs of it now and it does feel like a home because of that. Like yeah. just the other day we were having a problem with my water pump and I went under the sink, I removed all the drawers because I figured out how to do it, disassembled the pump, cleaned it out, put it back together and yeah. it was good to go. With the Kimbo, it makes that accessible for a lot more people. I would consider myself to be fairly handy but yeah. Pretty much anyone could come in here and work on it and yeah. re make repairs. So you have the quality from the start and you yeah. can keep it going for years and years. It should be that if you know how to assemble Ikea furniture, then you know how to repair a Kimbo. <laughs> yeah, very cool, man. Well, thanks again for having me here. It was cool to see how these Kimbos come to life. If you guys have any more questions, you can let me know in the comments down below and I will try to chime in with anything that I have knowledge on. If you want to find out more about the company, more about Mark, you can check out their website, which I'll leave in the description down below. And I believe that's all for today. So thanks for having me. Thanks if you guys, for coming. Yeah. If you guys are new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe, make new videos every week. As always, thanks for watching and I will talk to you in the next one. Take care.